Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Hopefully you guys are all having a fantastic day. Today's upload again is going to be about the upcoming pattern change. You may be wondering why am I doing this video on the upcoming pattern change when I've already made like four or five. Well, um, this is actually going to be a very significant changer in the weather pattern across the US for the next four or five months actually. This pattern change will set the stage for fall and winter to come. As you all know, or most of you know, that today's the first day of fall. It's the fall equinox where the summer and or the, the day and the night are about equal, roughly equal. And I'm making this video again because this will be um, a changer. This won't be just like a cold blast and that's it. This could bring first snow to many people. This could bring the first frost. And I just wanna keep you guys updated on the constant changes since this blast of cold air does constantly change on its significance and its um, severity. So if you like these type of videos, if you like these type of episodes, um, why not consider subscribing to my channel? If you're a new uh, viewer, then you could check out my channel first. You could watch some of my other videos and then just decide for yourself. It's just something to keep in the back of your mind, whether you'd like to support this channel or not. So getting into this, we see that right now, after that major storm that we had a couple days ago across the United States, we basically um, are cooled off by that storm. The cold front passed through. However, that won't be the main um, cold blast. I mean, if you're living across the Midwest today, um, you, you are definitely feeling cooler, chillier air. If you love, live along the East Coast, not necessarily. Um, that cold front hasn't reached you yet. And, yet and I don't think it will necessarily because the high ridge centered right across here will be keeping that um the cold air kind of backed off and not entering and intruding into the southeastern part of the United States and you can see then it's just very moderate you can see that Sunday Monday Tuesday some locations cooler some warmer but nothing on the extreme side on either side but we get through um Monday Tuesday and we could see that it definitely starts warming up. There's a big storm up here to the north that brings a lot of cold, uh, warm air from the Gulf of Mexico, a lot of moisture. Um, again, I don't think it'll be record-breaking warmth, but the cold air behind it, nothing too significant e either. This is towards the end of the week now, Thursday, Friday. You could see some cooler air, so similar to what we're experiencing now across the Midwest, if you live in the Midwest. And along the East Coast, not necessarily colder either. And then after that, um, there could be a small storm that tries riding up somewhere along here, but just the cold air at that point says, I've got enough of this, I am sick of the warm air, and I am going to intrude, and it comes out in a big way. So you can see, makes its way, the warm air still fighting back, trying to push that cold air back out, but I mean, just look at those colors right there. Those are dark, um, really, I meant to say bright pink colors that indicates way below average temperatures, up to 20 degrees below average in some places, while parts of the United States, um, the other parts with this storm system could be 12 to 16 degrees above average. In fact, if we were to look at the MSLP and average, you can see this storm system is trying to bring in quite a bit of, um, quite a bit of uh, warm air into the center of the country while this cold air is pushing it aside. So now let's go back to the two meter temp anomaly. This is at this point Sunday, September 30th. So I think this is next week Sunday. Yes, next week Sunday. And you can see that, okay, so this cold air mainly will be not necessarily diving all the way down to the south, or at least at this point it seems like it. If it does, I'll keep you, I'll, I'll, that's why I keep you guys updated because this constantly changes. Um, you can see these below average te uh, temperatures up in the north here, that definitely is frost, that definitely is some first snow, and I will show you in a minute actually the, um, the, the storm that will be happening across this location and there will actually be quite a bit of snow across say North Dakota and Minnesota actually occurring. Um, this is still far out so it may change but um, the 12Z model run is typically the best, most accurate because it has the freshest data with the balloon, uh, with the balloons going out from National Weather Service collecting data. It has the most you know, 18Z and OOZ, these two model runs typically every day, um, they typically just regurgitate the data and not, not always the best. This one's usually the tech, tech, typically the best. I'm not saying it's always going to be accurate, but it's typically, I'm trying to, okay, typically the best. So let's go to two, three, four. You can see that there's a strong cold front right here. I mean, a strong gradient of way above average temperatures to potentially frost areas. And you can see that, you know, 
The cold air doesn't really make its way south, but for a lot of the northern United States, I mean, I would say about half of the United States, the northern half, I mean, would be above, uh, below average, and the southern half would be above average. So, again, will this make it all the way down into, say, Georgia, Tennessee, the below average temperatures? Maybe not with this cold shot, but you can see it just persists and keep on keeps on coming. So, this pattern may be long-lived, um, and very, very drastic changes may be coming. The leaves will be changing, frost will be occurring, sorry, and even some first snowfall will be happening. So, if you're now wondering, okay, can you please show us the actual temperatures? That's exactly what I'm going to do. Don't worry. So let's go to two meter temperature shaded. And right now, if you were to look at or across the country, this this is what the day will look like. This is what what was I'm um, during the morning, and you can see warm across the southeast and along the east coast, 70s, 80s, 90s, even potentially <clears throat> across parts of sorry parts of the southeast, and then on the middle part middle part of the country. Fairly cooler, you could see 60s, 50s, that is way cooler compared to what we've been having earlier on in the week, so very much appreciated. And you can see during the night gets down pretty chilly, no frost yet, not cold enough. Um, 48, 50, 43, some um, borderline frost maybe across um, the U.S.-Canada border, but... I wouldn't really bet on that yet. Um, you can see then it doesn't really, it kind of backs off. You can see today, tonight, I should say, will be the coldest night for many locations they had so far. But then it, you know, backs off. You can see this, um, this air, this is at, okay, so let's just go day by day. This is Monday, September 24th. You could see not too cold during the night, 50s, 60s possibly some 40s, so pretty average on this type of year. Like I was pointing out, around this time frame, Monday into Tuesday will be transition period between the cold and the warm phase. So you can see um, this is trying to pull in, this storm system is trying to pull in warm air, and 83, 86, 70s, 80s, basically across, I would say, the southeastern part of the country. And then these parts of the woods will be 60s, 50s, and 40s. And then after that, you can see the cold air really starts coming in. I mean, some freezes even possible across the northern states. And you can see the warm air doesn't really make it far. It stays um, south of, say, um, northern Missouri, southern Illinois, around this area where I'm drawing this out right along here. Hopefully you can see that. Um, it should stay south of that, the warm air in terms of 80s, 70s, and even 90s. and you can see that those areas that will be below average um, are going to be way below average. I mean, you can see that is hard freeze right there in the mountains. And I would say even hard freeze across areas that aren't even in the mountains. North Dakota, parts of Montana that are in lower elevations could even see some um, cold temperatures. So you can see this is um, Monday, October 1st, so a week from tomorrow. Basically, nothing too cold. Um, some warmer, like this, for example, you can see this day it could be actually very warm, 80s, 70s. And if we were to look at a 2 meter temp anomaly, this would be marked by much above average conditions. And you look at that cold right there. That is just ridiculously cold. So let's go back to the 2 meter temp shaded. Um, keep in mind, this is during the day. You can see during the day, some of these temperatures are going to be 48, 34. So during the night, yes, that would mean frost and freezes. And you can see this storm system does move off to the east, marked by this cold front passing. And then I would almost say all oh, hell breaks loose. These are the daytime highs across the north. Um, you could see anywhere from southern Pennsylvania in the 40s to southern Iowa in the 50s. This is going to be very chilly air, lots of frosts happening, even some hard freezes ending the growing season. You could see that's just a huge swath of below, um, of below average temperatures and even some freezes for October, early October. And then you can see another storm system bringing some cooler air, warmer air, sorry. And even with this much above average warm air, only 70s and 60s because again the average keeps dropping so the average if it would now to be 20 degrees above average here in Chicago it would be around 90 but by October 8th if it were to be 20 degrees degrees above average it would be 70s maybe upper 70s so um, you gotta keep in mind that the, and look at that that's just very cold temperatures um, very below average and a lot and look at that real estate across the United States that is a lot of areas are going to be below freezing so let's quickly go to the MSLP precip and frozen which basically shows you this is the GFS six hour average precipitation rate of millimeters per hour of rainfall or snowfall we're getting to that time of the year now and you can see there's um, just an elongated area of a frontal boundary and it's producing some snow showers across southern Canada even extending into 
parts of northern United States, very parts, uh, very far northern parts of the United States, and then we see a mediocre pattern. You can see things not you don't see a lot of snow, but um, we have a high, so potentially some warmer, some cooler. This this week should be somewhere in between, but again, look at that. That is this is next week, October first. This could be the first named storm. I mean, look at that, um, North North Dakota, Montana. We could have the potential first snowstorm occurring, and then yet another one. So this is very exciting, guys. I am, um, I am very excited about this. Let's. It's that time of the year again where we could click on total snowfall, and we will be showing, and there will be snowfall appearing. I mean, look at that. Um, again, will there be even snow? That's the main question. I'm just showing you this just as a proof that there could be snow. I'm not talking about accumulations because will there be some snowfall accumulations? Probably, maybe an inch or two. Um, I don't think there will be 12 or 4 to 6 inches unless the, the cold air really is as cold as it's showing right now, which is ridiculously cold, or it's even colder than it's showing right now. And that is definitely a possibility. But it could also go the other way and it could be warmer than shown right now. This is the A214 Day Outlook by um, Climate Prediction Center, which is run by the National Weather Service, Service, which is run by NOAA. And this is anywhere from September 29th to October 5th. So around that time frame. <clears throat> this was last time updated 21st of September, which was yesterday. If you're watching this video on Saturday, September 22nd. And you can see below average temperatures for quite a big chunk of the United States, above average just in the southeast parts of Florida, and then above average apart parts of the west. Again, not necessarily too much above average, but it's definitely going to be warmer. You'll definitely be able to feel that. And look at Alaska. That is just ridiculously warm. Not much snowfall in terms of even the mountains occurring there right now. Very above average temperatures. And I think I even depicted it on my fall outlook, some above average temperatures, especially towards the western part of Alaska. I mean, that is that is very warm, unseasonably warm for Alaska. And you can see below average, that's the main pattern for much of the United States. And again, most people, I, you may be wondering also why I focus so much on the cold rather than the warm shots, because colder shots of air are just more noticeable and more dangerous, and they're more, more just they're more noticeable for more people and they bring a lot more change say if you're a bit above average in these locations you'll be in the 70s 80s yeah no one will will really notice that i mean 70s 80s yeah windows open maybe the ac if it's a upper 80s but you know just just weather that's what that's what people would call it but when it's a below average and you're really starting to feel the 50s and 40s in early, late september early october that's really noticeable, and many people will notice that, and people will be like, why didn't you mention it on your channel? Well, this is just proof that I did, and I warned you about it. Um, again, overall pattern, this week, somewhere in between, some cool shots, some warm ma air masses that will be penetrating through the cold air, but then um, next weekend could be really a game changer for the transition between summer, fall, and even into winter for many locations could be seeing frost and snow. So again, hopefully you enjoyed, hopefully you learned something new. I really love you guys. You've been supporting my channel so greatly lately. Um, I can't really express my appreciation for you. So really thank you for that. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you all guys in the next episode.